The Great Search with DigiK is here. Yay. Okay, what are you searching for this week, Lady Ada? Um, okay, so uh, we chatted about um, this 9 doff accelerometer magnetometer gyro from uh, Bosch that I'm working on a STEM QT board for, and uh, that kind of got me thinking about accelerometers, and I thought, you know, accelerometers are a really common sensor that people integrate into their project or product. They're very inexpensive these days. Uh, they're quite powerful and they can be used to sense a lot of things like motion, tilt, shaking, tapping. Um, accelerometers kind of do it all. And uh, I thought it would be good to show the different kinds of accelerometers you can get on DigiKey because there's a lot of them. And uh, an interesting way to um, also export data from DigiKey for more analysis. So let's go to Le Computer. Okay. So um, we'll start by first talking about um, what kind of accelerometer we're going to get. Uh, I want a surface mount accelerometer that can solder onto a board. Um, I want one that can be interfaced with um, my microcontroller or uh, you know whatever host processor it is. Um, I'm going to assume it's a 3.3 volt device, although there's a couple accelerometers that can be used in a very wide voltage range. Um, I'm going to look at both analog and digital accelerometers. And um, I'm also going to uh, show sorting by price and some of the extras you can get um, in accelerometers because they, they, they're kind of stuffed full of extra goodies these days. So the toughest part of this is actually just spelling accelerometer. There's two C's, one L. And um, there's a lot. There's also like uh, you know, a lot of dev boards, accessor accessories, and such. But uh, you know, I want the sensor transducer motion sensor, accelerometer. There's also different kinds of motion sensors like inclinometers um, and vibration sensors, but in this case, the motion sensor I want is an accelerometer. As always, I'm going to go straight up for the active parts only. Um, and I want ones that are uh, normally stocking, uh, that, you know, they're, they're, they may not be in stock today, but in general, they're in stock. And uh, I want Real House Compliance, which is pretty much all of them anyways. Um, okay, so next up, you can pick Axis. Um, there's like Dash, which usually you know, means uncategorized. X, X, Y, X, Y, Z, and Z. Accelerometers used to come in single axis. And you know, if you look at um, these, you'll see some of these are like really old school style, like analog accelerometers. Um, these are not used by most people. Um, some of these are like mil spec, that's why they're expensive. Some of them are like 500G. Um, in general, you're not going to want a single axe accelerometer. As you can see, the prices are quite high because they're very specialized usage. Um, you still used to, when you had an accelerometer with single axis, if you wanted multiple axes, you'd actually have to get three accelerometers and like solder them with 90 degree orientation. It was kind of horrible. Um, we're just going to go for the um, triple axis, X, Y, and Z. I also like to always include the dash. Um, sometimes the dash is from like really old products or products that like maybe it's unclear what the, the data is. I like to include them anyways, although I almost never end up picking those products because it's usually like some weird outlier. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to apply these filters. Okay, next up, um, you can pick... You can start to see, like, okay, I got these accelerometers. Uh, I'm going to pick ones that are surface mount, which is most of them. Um, there's also, like, free hanging. I guess it's, like, a that's some sort of module. And, oh, I lost myself. There's chassis mount. What are those? Oh, so chassis, this is, like, an all-in-one, you know, like integrated accelerometer module. This is not like a, a raw chip. Wow, this is $4,000. There's some nice expensive things on DigiKey. I wonder what the most expensive thing is. I think it's like probably an FPGA for like military usage. It's gonna be my guess. Box, okay. box of RAM. Box of RAM, okay. So, uh, but back to this, I, I want a surface mount. I'm not, I'm not ready for the $4,000 module. Um, okay, so type and Type kind of goes with output type. Um, so, in all honesty, every accelerometer is analog in the, in the in the bare details. It's it's a flexible uh, MEMS 
um, uh, kind of like finger joint that uh, moves up and down with acceleration and then it the, the capacitance of that changes and it's measured through an ADC but sometimes they toss the ADC in and that's when you get um, you know a digital type if you want an analog voltage output which you know some people really like them actually we sell a couple and they're quite popular um, one thing that's nice is that you can get them um, with you know not so there's a 200 G1 um, but they're usually ratiometric um, if you have an ADC you can of course sample it as quickly as you want um, Analog Devices makes a popular series, the ADXL series. Uh, STM also has them. You know, I don't see people using analog accelerometers as much anymore because they, they have ones that are built in digital. But there are some situations where, like, maybe you do want to have it integrate with an analog circuit. Um, so there's no, like, digital reading. For example, you could have a, um, a tripwire circuit, like, you know, a shake detector that looks for an absolute voltage change and then that gets latched and triggers some circuit. It might be, might be less expensive and might be more reliable um, if you just have the pure analog output because there's no like configuration and setup and like initialization required. You just, you turn it on and it instantly works. So analog does have some uses, um, but in this case, I'm gonna go with uh, I squared C or SPI. I want a digital output. Um, next, check out the voltage. Uh, you know, with sensors, I've been I've been trapped by this. I've been uh, I've been tricked. Uh, I see a sensor I really like, and then I don't notice until it's too late that it doesn't run at the voltage range I want it to. Um, if you're using 1.8 volt electronics or 3.3 volt, you want to take a look. Make sure that it either can you know can do both, but it isn't one or the other. For example, there's um, three of them that are 1.8 volt only. And uh, there's three that are only up to about two volts and nine that don't go past 2.7. So if you want to make sure that it runs at 3.3 volts, um, I usually select all and then like control click to deselect the ones that won't fit. Now you'll notice that there's none that are five volt. There's five volts there. I mean, there might be one or two analog ones that can run at five volts, but these days they're all going to be 3.3 or 1.8. Okay, next up, um, acceleration ranges. So likewise, there's, there's actually kind of like only two and a half ranges for accelerometers. There's either the like 16G and below, eight, eight to 16G and below, the 40G, and then like the 100 plus Gs. So 100 plus Gs is if you're dealing with like massive shock detection, um, like rocketry, like explosions i don't know it's something 100 g is like a huge amount of g's so uh if you know race car stuff if that's what you need uh you know it and you should you should get those we do sell a couple hundred g accelerometers but for the most part if you're just detecting like user motion you're gonna want to stick um 8g and below often you know user motion doesn't really even get below uh, get above 4g again 1g is just normal gravity so think you know do things really accelerate more than four times the speed of gravity um and then um for sports like you know humans bumping into the humans at high speeds and high masses uh for those you're gonna want um like 16 to 32 g's um that's what usually like sports activity accelerometers are for uh in this case you know i just i i, I don't mind having slightly higher than than 8 g but i don't i definitely don't need the 200 g's so, um, and you're not going to get ones that both do 204. Like you either get like the one, two, three, four, you know, one, two, four, eight range or the 100, 200. So again, select all and then use the control key to click away the ones that are, you know, way higher than I'm expecting to use, which is about like 2G. Okay, cool. Okay, there's also features. Um, so here's the deal with features because they're they're helpful when looking at sensors, but I always rely on the data sheet because these are very easy to like get wrong or misunderstand. So not that um, you know it's something will have a low pass filter and this is like a total lie. It's just that there might be ones that do have a low pass filter, but it's like a different kind than what you want. Maybe the low pass filter only like 
has a differential mode. I mean, there's all sorts of like weirdnesses with each accelerometer. So features gives you a sense of what it does, but I don't use this as a pure way to filter out chips. And then um, here's another thing that I, I do want to mention because as you're looking at sensors, this comes up. If you're sometimes you're looking for sizes like when we did the inductor video, remember I was like, oh, I really want it to be less than four by four millimeters. We are not gonna get necessarily like, you, you do have like the sizes um, here, but they're not, they're, it's not like written out the same way. So what you have to do is you have to read the package device and these numbers at the end are the millimeter by millimeter size. So for example, this QFN is three by three and this LGA is 1.6 by 1.6. And that'll give you a sense of how big it's going to be on the, the circuit board. And also, conversely, how hard it's going to be to solder. You want something with the fewest pins in the largest package to make it easy to solder, less yield problems. Something that's going to be, you know, less than 2 by 2 millimeters or like this CSP, which is, you know, 1.3 by 1 millimeter. That's going to be very, very small. Not going to be very hand solderable or even a hot air solderable perhaps. So um, keep that in mind. I, I, I'm not too picky. I will say like, you know, I, I don't really want it to go beyond this size. Like I don't, I don't want it to be four by four or five by five. So I can apply that filter. And then you can just start looking at um, the chips that are available. And I think, you know, here you can of course go by cost, in which case nothing beats this uh, Keonix. K, uh, KXT J3. Um, the fact that there's 30,000 in stock makes me think like, wow, the people really do like this. That it's a lot of stock to hold of a single sensor. Um, hard to beat at 51.8 cents though. Um, there's definitely price wars that occur with accelerometers. This is my favorite, uh, the List 3DH as well. Uh, and of course the Bosch sensor text down here. Another thing I just want to note, I don't use this very often, but it's good to have, especially when you want to do maybe more detailed analysis. Um, there's this download table button. And when you download the table, you'll actually get the exported data from DigiKey with all of the different, um, the, the data with all the, the table headers. So in this case, if you want to, um, if you're good at Excel or, you know, spreadsheet programming, you could, for example, filter out, you know, only ones that contain um, the word sleep mode or something. Now, for this short list, maybe it doesn't matter so much, but um, if you have like, you know, a thousand items and you want to, you don't want to have to page through them, you want to quickly sort them. Uh, you might want to sort by, you know, multiple um, columns in order, like sort by this one and then sub sort by another one or, or divide and conquer. Um, you can use your spreadsheet program. You don't have to use a DigiKey site. It's got great search and it can do the selection modes, but this data is the same data. So that's another top tip for a great search. And that's the great search for DigiKey. Okay.